Now today we are going to talk about the Cassie and Diddy drama. I'm going to give you my commentary on the petition that was filed as well as the information on there because if you don't feel like reading it, we will go through it together and you'll get my commentary. So let's get into this. So today we are going to have a podcast. I have a lot to say about this topic, but I'm going to focus specifically on Cassie and Diddy during this video and then I'll just give y'all a part two later. Cassandra Ventura, also known as Cassie, an American singer, songwriter, model, actress, and dancer in the 2000s recently sued Diddy. Now they were in a relationship and they were in this relationship for 10 years and basically this lawsuit is exposing everything that happened between Cassie and Diddy allegedly. So we are going to get into that. But for those of you who don't know who Cassie is, she was born August 26th in 1986 in Connecticut. Ryan Leslie signed her to his label and then two years later they came out with the Me and You single that a lot of you know to this day. It's me and you now. Now this record, it was really popular in Germany and I remember hearing it as a kid so much. But not only did this song play in clubs, it was on the radio, I'm sure a lot of people had it on their iPods on repeat at the time. So basically the world was hearing this song and Diddy was also someone who heard the song as well and he liked it. The moment Diddy heard this song is when he began his narcissistic scheming ways to state claim on Cassie and basically ruin her life for his own enjoyment. So we are going to talk about the facts of the case based on the current lawsuit that's going on. And then I'm also going to give my commentary on it and let y'all know my thoughts. Here's the thing about Diddy. I'm not sure. Most people know who Diddy is, but I want to be thorough and just explain. So Diddy, he is known for being a producer. He has very shady ways, but I feel like it depends on how old you are will kind of correspond to what you think about Diddy. So for example, he's trying to come across as like oh you know I love everybody peace and love I am so Zen when he is just a shysty shady person I decided to change my name again I just I'm just not who I am before I'm something different so my new name is love aka brother love but let's focus on Cassie and him. The kids of the 90s and the 80s definitely know what was going on with Diddy and all of his shady ways. So when you hear about Cassie and Diddy being together, it was already a red flag. The red flags were flying. So it was no surprise when all of these allegations came out, especially with the timing of the allegations. The allegations came out around the time of the anniversary of Kim's death. So this does make it seemed like it was strategically planned when Cassie was going to initiate this lawsuit. So let's get into the facts. Cassie met P. Diddy in late 2005 or early 2006 after he heard Cassie's first single playing in the club, Me and You. He expressed that he was interested in signing her to his label, Bad Boy Records. Now at this time, Cassie was 19 years old and Diddy was 37. It's 15 to 20 years apart which I don't have an issue with relationship gaps or anything. I think it depends on the people and what their dynamic are, but Diddy is Diddy, so it was never gonna work. It was definitely going to be very damaging and traumatic. In February of 2026, Ventura, she signed a 10 album deal with Diddy and signing a 10 deal record label does not sound appealing to me. I feel like maybe three would be more appealing to me because 10 is definitely a commitment. 10 albums? Tell me what you think about that in the comment section below. I would not want to have a 10 album commitment to Diddy, especially when there's a track record of him not treating his employees or his artists the best. So they end up not making money and they like literally his son is literally making money from other people's work. All right, so Cassie's first album, it was released in 2026 in August, 
and it was number four on the U.S. Billboard 200. Now, to promote the album, Cassie made television appearances on MTV, TRL, and BET's 106 in Park. This document states that she had significant performance anxiety during these appearances, and press outlets were highly critical of her performances on these shows. Now, let's unpack this. If her and Diddy had already interacted and they were a thing, but it was a low key thing at this point, she could have had performance anxiety just because of the trauma of being in a relationship with Diddy. And you know, you're new to performing, this can be an issue. And another aspect that I want to touch on is when you look at the video, which I'm gonna enter in here, it seems like she is afraid and it could be because she's in front of the audience for the first time it could be because you know she's a little shaken up because she has a the manager allegedly diddy it kind of reminds me of that mystical song danger and it's like he's like danger and he's like all loud and stuff and then it sounds like nivia the girl is singing in a scary way she's like danger And y'all know Mystical, he has his own things that have been going on, but this isn't about him. That could have been something that Cassie was going through and it could have been because she doesn't really have talent to sing. Like there are plenty of other better singers than Cassie. The only reason she started singing was because she was on Mario's video, Just a Friend, and since she was in the industry, someone said, oh, why don't you take vocal lessons and learn how to dance? So she took vocal lessons and she began to dance, but that was earlier on in her career. That wasn't just, she didn't have a history of singing. She's a pretty girl. She was a model and honestly, she probably should have stayed just a model. Granted, I do listen to me and you, but is it one of those songs that, you know, would make me cry or say, wow, this person can really sing? No, it's just a little fun song and that's all it is. Now the part where it says the press were highly critical of Ventura's performances on the show, I don't think they were highly critical. That was just objective feedback and you can't get upset when you are in the spotlight and it's your job to, to do something and perform it how you performed it when you were in the studio. You can't get upset when someone holds you to those expectations and if you don't meet those expectations, it's not being highly critical. It is just letting you know whether you know you hit the marker or whether you know things felt a little flat now Diddy however he said that he was trying to rehabilitate Cassie and he told MTV News you could hear her nervousness in her voice and to be honest I kind of smiled at it because it made me really appreciate what I really love about her red flag that was weird okay that sound weird to me because it seemed like he loved her it sounded like infatuation as opposed to you know generally just loving a person or just saying it made me appreciate what i really like about her she's a regular person it just made me appreciate that she got nervous it was kind of cute to me red flag to be honest you got to understand that success for her is coming out of nowhere it's a it's so huge and sometimes everybody handles it differently the records note that they felt some type of way about him using the word cute and regular. Some comments were true, so they're saying, oh, you know, she was thrusted into the spotlight and she wasn't sure how to navigate her celebrity status. He recognized and glorified her naivety, so it would lay the groundwork for his manipulative and coercive romantic and sexual relationship with Cassie. So basically, when Cassie was signed to Bad Boy Records, Diddy became super entrenched in her life and basically asserting his control over her and treating her like a possession and then just inserting himself into all aspects of her career and her personal life. And this is not the first time this happened. You can tell by the way Diddy has always inserted himself into his artist's music when he did not need to be there. Like to say, any artist out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star don't want to don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, come to death row. November 2006, Diddy invited Cassie to perform his song Come To Me along with him at the MTV Europe Music Awards in Copenhagen in Denmark. <laughs> 
after the rehearsal for the performance, Diddy walked around with a robe and a drink in his hand and he was flaunting his lavish party style to the newly signed artist. So not only did Diddy's makeup artist tell Cassie that she was he was interested in her, her hairstylist told her that he was interested in her. So Cassie, she just kind of shrugged it off. She she did express disgust at the time they claimed because of the large age gap between the two. Diddy tried to position himself as a father figure and protector of Miss Ventura after a trip to Las Vegas. She had a brief hospital stay and she was fully healthy by the time she got out, but she went to the club with her friend and then Diddy saw her out and he reprimanded her, telling her go home and take care of herself. So at that time, Cassie thought that the record label was looking out for her well-being when really it was just his best interest at mind. He didn't want this pretty girl going out with her friends. He wanted to assert his control over her yet again. But little did she know, it'd be the very beginning. Diddy would make sure that he was involved in all aspects of her personal life and her social life by allegedly inviting himself to her 21st birthday party in Las Vegas and then he also brought along some famous musicians, producers just to flaunt his celebrity status and try and appear as if he is gifting her with these things but he's really disguising it as him once again asserting himself into her life. Now, to put the cherry on top, Cassie was in a relationship at this time and Diddy Combs knew that she was in a relationship at that time. And he was actually in a relationship as well with Kim Porter. But Diddy having his Diddy Bop ways, he was still trying to pursue a relationship with Cassie. At an after party in a hotel suite after Cassie's 21st birthday pulled Cassie into the bathroom and then forcibly kissed her. Cassie did not want this contact so she eventually she immediately ran out of the bathroom out of the hotel suite and she cried and then she told her best friend about what happened but she was too scared to tell anyone else. The next day the music video awards the VMA Cassie's boyfriend at the time joined her and Diddy at the table for the award ceremony and then Diddy became angry telling Cassie that the invitation to the award ceremony was only for her and not for her boyfriend. Although Cassie definitely declined Diddy's advances, he continued to demand that Cassie spend time with him. So this included a weekend at Diddy's house in Miami and nights out in New York City. Now, one particular night around 2006, Diddy insisted on taking Cassie out. Cassie, she said that she would go, but the only reason that she went was because she felt like if she denied Diddy, she would have to face repercussions for her album deal and his company Bad Boy Records, which once again, she signed a 10 album deal. So she's kind of stuck with him for a really long time unless she wants to pay a huge amount of money. And this is just a classy quid pro quo right here. So Diddy picked up Cassie from her apartment in Manhattan. He had this luxury blue car and Cassie was surprised when she got in the car because Diddy was already drunk, okay? He handed her a pill and then he told her to take it. Cassie asked, what pill is this? And then Diddy didn't even answer her and told her that she would like it. So she later learned that the pill was X and it's something that she claimed that she had never tried before and she didn't want to try it. And this was the first time that Cassie got high or more so it was the first time that Mr. Combs, Diddy, got Cassie high. Combs then decided to drive recklessly at very high speeds down the west side highway of Manhattan and then Cassie was really scared but she didn't object to Diddy although he appeared drunk, high, and agitated. Now, I don't know why people do this. More so guys, it's like, and you think it's really usually childish guys, but I have definitely went on a date with someone that wanted to drive all crazy. Granted, they weren't high or drunk, but they were driving crazy. And they think maybe it's because they had like a really nice car. They're like, ooh, let me show you how fast this car goes. And try to do all those weird things. When really that does not impress girls. Like maybe that impresses your boys and all that stuff, but the girls are not impressed by that. Or at least not this girl. I don't know. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments section below. Say why you do that if you're one of the guys that do that. Diddy took Cassie into some fancy restaurant in downtown Manhattan and he decided he got into an altercation with the security staff because they wouldn't let 
him enter in because he was a bit belligerent okay so cassie decided to go home but for the remainder of the night diddy messaged cassie back to back to back to back to back complaining that she left him high and alone now that's definitely a red flag too like if someone's constantly texting you like that and then you also once again see his narcissism if this is true because he just he's victim blaming her you got kicked out you couldn't come in i went home and you're complaining that i left you to be high and alone all right so early 2007 combs he decided to flex his power and influence yet again and he paid a promoter to create a fake flyer for a party hosted by cassie now the fake posting allowed cassie to have an excuse to go to miami and to get her away from her boyfriend by using the guise of a legitimate event that she had to attend cassie was stunned at how easily combs were able to recruit others to lie for him so this is once again another red flag and you're able to see once again the power and the influence that he has and how far he's able to go to try and shift the public's opinion cassie felt really uncomfortable with the fake flyer she went to miami because you know diddy created this elaborate lie which he's done before and she was scared to go against his wishes and face repercussions because her career was so fresh and new and she didn't want this to be the downfall of her career career when in reality it kind of was when you think about it it's kind of like ryan leslie when he signed cassie to his label it's like he sold cassie to diddy as a slave that's what it seems like to me so cassie she goes to miami she has she is provided with so many by diddy and she became the most intoxicated that she had ever become and her intoxication lasted through the whole weekend trip now she wanted diddy to continue to support her career so she felt like she couldn't say no to him she couldn't say no i don't want to take these candies anymore so after providing her with all of these candies mr combs don't throw it on thump 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 with cassie during this trip who knows how many times who knows who else was included in this they didn't go into detail about that but that's just where my mind drew two years within meeting diddy Cassie found herself in the immediate circle of her boss, Diddy. She also realized that he was one of the most powerful men in the entertainment industry. They described Diddy as having an aggressive and demanding approach to those that he worked with, making it feel impossible for anyone to challenge them. And Cassie soon learned that Diddy insisted blind loyalty from everyone in his inner circle. Along with other things in here that's alleged, I also believe this point because do you remember making the band? In making the band, Diddy wanted them to go and get some cheesecake from juniors and juniors was closed the store in brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk okay they had to walk to juniors to get some cheesecake for diddy just for juniors to not even be open that just shows you the kind of mind games that he plays with his artists cassie saved up a good bit of money from her young modeling career but she did say that diddy's displays of wealth were very intimidating to her diddy he would pay with things with wads of cash and he would always tell cassie don't worry about money i have money diddy would expense lavish vacations for him and Cassie he purchased a car for her he purchased an apartment for her he provided her with extensive amounts of designer clothing now that's where you went wrong Cassie because okay you got a car purchase that's cool he paid for her apartment girl why do you want an apartment Diddy is Diddy he has all this money you need to be getting homes okay you need to get homes if you're getting your poom poom turned out you need some homes you need something that's going to gain some equity not an apartment and make sure it's in your name if you do get that house make sure it's in your name and he just pays it off completely you know if she was afraid to defend herself I can understand why she would want to not ask for more but I definitely would have tried it so let's delve into this apartment so Diddy got the apartment 
for her around 2008 or 2009 and he rented the apartment in Manhattan for Cassie I'm sure that was so expensive even though it is an apartment but it was walking distance of Diddy's New York home so first he showed Cassie the apartment by bringing her there along with her parents and then Cassie's parents were skeptical of Diddy's displays of wealth but they were proud of their daughter's newfound success this is a red flag because if this was my child granted Cassie is an adult she's 19 at this point but she's not an adult for real for real but she's 19 at this point and if she is in love with this person which I'm not getting at this point it seems like it's just fear right now but I can see if she was in love with this person and her parents like guided her against doing this it doesn't really sound like her parents were as involved as I would expect parents to be it seemed like they were trying to benefit off of their daughter's success and her connections. Now we're in 2010 and Diddy apparently paid for an apartment for Cassie in Los Angeles as well and it was five minutes away from Diddy's house. So he paid for many of her apartments in California and he also purchased a Jaguar for her in 2013 and 2014. And this probably came after all the hitting because you know abusers they love they love, love, love to gift people things after they finish hitting them. And also you see that both of these apartments are right next to Diddy's apartment so he can keep eyes on her or have people keep eyes on her and what she's doing. Every event that Cassie attended from travel, makeup, clothing, it was paid for by Diddy and his affiliate companies. And he probably used it as a tax write-off or some type of expense for marketing like I hear he does for Young Miami. He had control over Cassie introducing her to a candy-fueled lifestyle. It kept her complacent and compliant. Diddy first introduced Cassie to, oh my, the big O, okay, the big O's around 2008. We'd often have some pills and other candies out in the open candy like oddly enough they use that description and upon information and belief Diddy has been addicted to prescription and he takes X very frequently allegedly she was given the prescription that Diddy had received from a doctor in Miami and eventually Diddy exhausted his supply of the pills and he demanded that Cassie get some prescriptions from another doctor in Miami on her name so he could take them so Diddy he became deeply involved in Cassie's life like we talked about before his personal staff would attend to Cassie's day-to-day -day travel needs um, medical care all of it and on many times Diddy and Cassie personal rec medical records he had it sent to his email address like for example she had been expecting memory loss potentially due to all of the candy use or head injuries caused by Diddy beating her and they described it below so she had her MRI records they were all sent directly to Diddy and then Diddy uh, repeatedly arranged for his staff to drive her to certain appointments and this sounds really familiar to someone else and I am going to tell y'all about that in part two maybe he is trying to own Cassie another example that they listed was that he would manipulate her and trying to ensure her obedience early on in the relationship Diddy asked what he called what she called her grandfather she referred to her grandfather as pop pop so then Diddy said that Cassie should call him pop pop Diddy and Cassie they were using drug or they were using candy together in his home and one of the security staff they barged in and they announced that Suge Knight Diddy's rival <laughs> was spotted at Mel's drive-in diner in Los Angeles. Now, Combs, he began to get dressed and he retrieved so many glizzies, or I can't say glizzies, because I think you two know what a glizzy is. They're like, you're not talking about a hot dog. So they got a bunch of pals from a safe. They ran out of the home to where they thought that Nike was gonna be eating and Cassie became terrified and began to cry. So then on two occasions, Diddy demanded that Cassie hold the pal in her purse. And Cassie, she was, she claimed she wasn't familiar with Pal, so she was scared that Pal would go off in her purse accidentally, and she had no reason why he wanted her to carry a Pal in her purse except to just reinforce that that he was a violent person, a powerful person, and a dangerous person. I'm not sure if that was the case. That seems like it's a bit speculation, just because they're 
kind of sound like they're assuming why he required her to have a pal in her purse it's a possibility but it could be because if people are trying to get to diddy they might get at cassie so she can potentially like protect herself with the gum or i mean with the pal or that could be what diddy was trying to make her think who knows who knows so over the next decade multiple times each year diddy would violently hit cassie and he would leave bruises on her body allegedly and every instance when he would beat her he used his money and his power to orchestrate some extensive efforts to try and hide evidence of his hitting her by hiding cassie at hotels for days just to let her bruises heal there was one time after a party with jay-z combs beat cassie repeatedly in the escalade and allegedly and he was kicking her and hitting her and then he forced her out of the vehicle in fifth avenue in new york city and she was able to get a cab and get to her apartment in manhattan where she basically cried in fear and she realized that she couldn't tell anyone about what happened at the hands of this crazy powerful man and she spent three days hiding in her apartment i guess from the public because it's not like she could hide from Diddy. He probably had people watching her. So now let's go to January 2009. So Diddy learned that Cassie spoke to another music manager at a party in LA and he became mad. He became furious. And she hoped that speaking to this manager would allow her to grow her career. So she's just networking. And Combs, she thought that Combs would be happy for her, but he became extremely angry and he pulled her out of the club where the party was taking place. And then in the car, leaving the club, Diddy hit Cassie and then he pushed her into the corner of the vehicle and then he stomped on her face. And then the staff, Roger Bonds, came to stop the beating, but he was unable to de-escalate the situation. So when the car arrived at Diddy's um, house, Cassie, she tried to run away, but Diddy followed her and then kicked her in the face again, I guess once he found her. Cassie was bleeding so much and then she was ushered into Diddy's house and she began to throw up from the, from the violence. Diddy panicked when he saw the damage that he'd done to Cassie and then he forced his staff to bring Cassie to a hotel suite at the London Hotel in Los Angeles and she was required to stay there for a week. So during this stay, her injuries, they did heal and Cassie began to realize that Diddy is, his team is very loyal and they not only knew about it, but they witnessed the beating and they also witnessed that we're not going to tell anything and they weren't going to stop his behavior and she also recognized that she was powerless in the situation and she said that reporting Diddy to the authorities it would not change his status or influence because just give Diddy another reason to hurt her so while she's in the hotel she asked to go home to her parents but Diddy wouldn't let her leave she lied to her mother when asked about online gossip forum that reported what happened between the two allegedly Diddy he continued to instruct his assistant to purchase a lot of gifts for Cassie and they were delivered to the hotel room and she remained trapped. She was terrified, she was isolated, and she was unable to see a pathway out of Diddy's abusive hold on her life. So she found herself becoming numb to the hitting that she was experiencing and she became entirely beholden to Diddy's demands allegedly and she began to blindly follow his instructions out of fear of being on the receiving ends of a vicious beating. By Diddy's own admission his relationship with Cassie was like Bobby and Whitney a clear acknowledgement of the unequal power dynamic and excessive domestic violence that permeated their relationship. From the outside looking in, Cassie had heard others refer to her relationship with Diddy as similar to Ike and Tina's, which I can agree to. They are definitely giving Ike and Tina as opposed to Bobby and Whitney. Granted, Tina had more talent than Ike did, but as far as like, actually Tina became more powerful than Ike too. So that definitely not the best. I don't think that's the best tagging as far as like the beating. Yeah, but the dynamics are definitely different in both situations. They are their own thing, Cassie and Diddy. They go on to reiterate that Diddy was volatile, abusive partner, and he had power. He owned her label and therefore his her future was in his hands and he had control over every aspect of her life. So later, 
Cassie goes on to talk about trafficking. She felt like she had to be beholden onto his whims and his demands. And while in New York City, Diddy told Cassie that he wanted to engage in a fantasy that he called voyeurism. And Diddy said that it would turn him on if he saw Cassie with another D. Okay, okay. So the first time Diddy hired a man, he brought the man into the LA home and the man, Diddy and Cassie wore masquerade masks and they took candies. So Diddy directed Cassie to perform acts on this man while Diddy watched what happened and then he would play while he directed Cassie and the man specific acts to do. And once again, this is him trying to exert his power over two people. And honestly, I'm sure he's attracted to both of them. This encounter, it lasted multiple days. I wish I knew how many. I wish they said how many days. Diddy, he began to call the arrangement a FO, which he calls a freak off. And he would repeatedly tell Cassie at random moments that he wanted a FO and Cassie was eventually expected to facilitate the location, the hiring of the male worker. So at certain points, Cassie and Diddy's relationship, he would insist on an FO every week. Diddy, he would repeatedly tell Cassie that this practice was for was our thing and our secret. FOs would often take place in hotel suites, including Trump International Hotel, in Columbus Circle, um, Le Mitage, Beverly Hills, the London Hotel, and the Intercontinental Century City, Intercontinental Atlanta, Intercontinental NYC, and the One Hotel in New York City, in Miami, the Mandarin Oriental Hotel, and Fontainebleau, Miami, Beverly Hills Hotel, Shutters on Beach in Los Angeles. Wow. They must have the receipts for all of this because this is very, this part is very specific. So on one occasion in 2013, Diddy had a FO set up at the Intercontinental Hotel in New York City. He was charged with 10 thousands of dollars in damages by the hotel. Upon information and belief, Mr. Combs and Chief of Staff Tony Fletcher paid the invoice charged by the hotel. So this is why I always pray before I go into hotels because you never know what happened in your hotel room before you get there and what spirits are in your room. Cassie, she eventually was instructed to use websites and escort services to find male workers to participate in the FOs and Mr. Comb told Cassie to search for BBC y'all. Sometimes Diddy would fly out the male workers to his location including to multiple cities in the U.S. as well as abroad. So he required Cassie and his staff to help him make these arrangements. So at this point, Cassie isn't even, she doesn't even have her singing career or whatever she was trying to do before. Um, I'm sure she's not modeling at this point. And I'm interested if they're going to get into the point of her career where she shaves off side of her head. Because honestly, I feel like the reason she shaved off the side of her head was because he, Diddy allegedly, you know, he might have pulled a piece of her hair out and it was just easy to shave the side and just wait for it to eventually grow back. But let's get back to these FOs. Diddy's assistants would help him set up the FOs include by setting up the hotel suites with baby oil and Astroglide. <laughs> Ooh, okay, I guess at least there's some lube. All right. Diddy, he would always supply Cassie and the worker with copious amounts of candy before and during the FOs and Cassie was giving she was given she was given basically alcohol and excess I don't know if I could say all this but in the event that I can't say all this just know that Cassie was given a lot of candy okay it was Halloween whenever they had the FOs. And this allowed her to disassociate herself with the horrific encounters that were happening. And it became commonplace to get IV fluids days after the FO to recover from the excessive substances that were pushed upon her. Cassie was required to dress up in lingerie for the FOs. And Diddy insisted that she wear white nail polish to contrast the nails with the skin of the black men he hired to have um, relations with her. During the FO, Diddy would instruct Cassie to pour excessive amounts of oil over herself. Diddy would then instruct Cassie and the worker to speak to each other and then would specifically tell Cassie where to touch the workers. Diddy, he would say things like, grab that big D and ask her, how does it feel? How does it feel? And he directed her to perform for him. 
During the FOs, in addition to directing Cassie and playing, Diddy would use his phone, laptop, and tablet to film Cassie being with the worker. He treated the forced encounter as a personal art project, adjusting the candles he used for the lighting to frame the videos he took. While Cassie, allegedly, while Cassie quickly deleted any photographs, videos of the acts that were taken on her phone, Diddy repeatedly made it clear that he retained many videos of Cassie during the FOs. Even when she deleted the videos, Diddy would come and tell Cassie that he was able to recover the deleted videos from her device. And on one occasion, he sat next to her on a flight and made her watch a video throughout that she deleted, reinforcing her inability to escape an immense power he held over her. What a mind F. During some of the FOs, Diddy would become extremely intoxicated, allegedly, and hit Cassie in front of the male workers. Cassie was repulsed by Diddy's demands, but between the physical beatings and recognizing his incredible power and incredible temper, Cassie became petrified of her partner and boss and felt that she could not say no. Even though he would present her with lavish gifts prior to or in the middle of FO, seemingly acknowledging the ways in which these forced encounters constituted as work for Cassie and that he needed to compensate her for this work. At one point, he had even given her so many designer bracelets for FOs immediately following his brutal hittings that she felt that she was shackled by his presence. And honestly, that is definitely symbolism of what that is. I knew someone who they weren't a slave, but they watched like their parents were a slave. And this woman, she never wore bracelets. She never wore necklaces because it would just remind her of the shackles that she had seen slaves in. And I feel like this is true. It was those designer bracelets were just a designer shackle. The house that Diddy bought her, the apartments, it was just a lavish cage. So frequently, Cassie would have anxiety before the fo sometimes to the point of vomiting she would kneel over the toilet and diddy would shame her allegedly into performing for him forcing her to get up and proceeding with the encounter some people they're into vomiting so he might have gotten off on that especially considering you know what i just read shaming her into performing for him he probably liked the lube creation from the thing and him asserting his power oh my goodness this is just so much so she knew cassie knew that telling diddy that she did not want to engage in fo's it was going to be met with anger and violence so in addition to that any suggestions that cassie made they would be refused for the fo cassie could go, could not go to the police because she had a lot to lose i wonder what he meant by that was he talking about her life was he talking about everything that he bought for her in the middle of a surprise birthday dinner for cassie's 29th birthday Diddy insisted that Cassie leave the party and go to the hotel for an F.O. Now, how are you going to arrange an F.O. during her birthday? Like, it's her day. You can't let her chill during her birthday. All right, let's continue. So she expressed that she did not want to go. When Cassie expressed that she did not want to go, Diddy had Cassie cornered by his security staff and then forced her to leave with him. So after this FO, Diddy and Cassie, they went back to the hotel room that Cassie was staying in where some of Cassie's friends were already hanging out. Diddy, he was severely intoxicated allegedly and at one point during the night picked up one of Cassie's friends like a child and dangled her over the balcony of the 17th hotel floor suite. Cassie and her friends, they were scared by Diddy's erratic behavior, but Cassie was heavily sedated because of the candy that she took to participate in the FO and therefore she was unable to respond to the terrifying behavior. So the FO became work for Cassie despite her protesting that she didn't want to do that. So basically the FOs became work for Cassie as opposed to her career that she thought she was going to get. So now let's talk about how Cassie tries to escape Diddy's treatment. Anytime that Cassie tried to create distance between her and Diddy, he used his network to find her and convince her to return. If you haven't seen the Kiki Palmer video, I just want to reiterate a point. So in the Kiki Palmer video, which also touches on similar treatment, I mentioned how research shows that a lot of times women who are in relationships like this, it takes them at least seven times to leave and then on average, 
the eighth time is when they're really ready to leave and when they really leave the person that is hitting them kind of snaps and they think if i can't have this person no one can y'all know how it can end for some people we see cassie here trying to create some distance between herself and diddy which is great like she is trying to get away on multiple occasions diddy he would send his employees to lure cassie back in 2011 during a rough patch between their relationship cassie had a brief relationship with kid cuddy so when Combs returned from a trip, he demanded another F.O. of Cassie and she said yeah. And during this F.O. Combs found Cassie's phone and emails between her and Kid Cuddy. Diddy became enraged and he started to place a manual corkscrew between his fingers and lunged it at Cassie, allegedly. Cassie, she ran away to stay at Kid Cuddy's home so, so she could escape Diddy's anger. And then after Diddy told his staff member to tell Cassie that he just needed to talk to her, even though Diddy was upset. So feeling like she couldn't escape Diddy and his network of enforcers, Cassie decided to return to Diddy. He hit her so many times, he kicked her in the back and she tried to run out of the door yet again. So she went to her parents' home in Connecticut where her mother took pictures of her bruises. In February 2012, during Paris Fashion Week, Diddy told Cassie that, that he was gonna kaboom Kid Cudi's car and he wanted to ensure that Kid Cudi was home with his friends when it happened. It's the theatrics for me, like, ugh narcissism like ugh, it's just so disgusting like he wants people to be able to witness this he wants people to witness his power and the influence that he has and what he's able to arrange so around that time kid cuddy's car explodes in his driveway so cassie she was so scared and then she began to fully comprehend what he was willing and able to do to those that he felt like wronged him or slighted him so 2015 cassie spoke to a popular music manager at a party in a hotel suite in las vegas combs saw her speaking to this manager he sternly told her to step into the bath bedroom adjoining the suite in the bedroom that's when diddy hit cassie severely allegedly she ran from corner to corner of the room trying to avoid his beating and kicking and when she tried to lock herself in the bathroom he pushed through punched and kicked her while curled up under the toilet she screamed the screams was drowned out by the loud music playing outside of the hotel suite so i'm wondering what is the manager the music manager that witnessed all this happening i wonder what he's doing right now because they were at a suite right they're at a suite the suite has various places she he told her to step into the adjoining bedroom i don't think the loud sounds really drowned everything out i think that music manager heard what was happening and you know birds of a feather flock together diddy's head of security and assistant saw cassie after the after the treatment that i told you about they begin to cry so cassie she had two black eyes a burst and bruised lip and a huge welt on her forehead upon seeing the results of this vicious attack diddy immediately took steps to conceal his wrongdoing diddy forced cassie to stay at his home in humbly hills along with one of his sons i wonder which one so while there diddy facetimed cassie and stated you gotta go up and put on more makeup my son can't see you like that and then cassie felt like she had no choice but to obey the person that was treating her like this even though security guards assistants friends saw the situation she was in no one dared to help Help her or speak up on her behalf therefore she had no choice but to remain under his abusive hand later in 2015 while shooting a movie in Cape Town South Africa Cassie began a flirtatious relationship with the actor she spent New Year's Eve with this actor but Diddy soon found out Diddy called the actor and threatened him and the actor proceeded to call Cassie and tell her you really need to call Diddy oh my goodness I'm surprised that she was even able to go to South Africa considering the hold that Diddy had on her so in or around March 2016 during an FO at the Intercontinental Hotel in, in Century City Los Angeles Diddy became extremely intoxicated mm -hmm. he's he's pushing all these alcoholic beverages like Chirac and and whatever other alcohol he was trying to sell and claim that he was the owner of but he really wasn't so he had been drinking all that so he became extremely intoxicated and pu and punched cassie in the face allegedly giving her a black eye so after he fell asleep cassie tried to leave the hotel room but as she was trying to exit diddy 
woke up and began screaming at Cassie. He followed her into the hallway of the hotel while he was yelling at her. He grabbed her and then he took the vases in the hallway and threw them at her, causing her causing the glass to crash around them. And she began to she began to run up to the elevator to escape. Then she managed to get into the elevator and when she got to the lobby, quickly took a cab to her apartment. Upon realizing that her runaway would cause Diddy to become even more angry with her, she completely stuck in a vicious cycle of treatment like this. Cassie decided to return to the hotel with the intention to apologizing for running away from her abuser and when she returned to the hotel security staff they urged her to get back into the cab and go to her apartment suggesting that they had seen the security footage sewing what Diddy had done to Cassie and throwing glass at her in the hotel hallway allegedly. They believe that Diddy paid the intercontinental Century City $50,000 for the hallway security footage from that evening. After this, Cassie left her home and she went to hide away at a friend's home in Florida. James Cruz, president of Bad Boy Management, tracked Cassie down and told her that her single would not be released if she did not answer Mr. Combs' phone calls. Now, with that being said, y'all should have been let her release a single. Like, y'all are really dangling this single over her head. So, a woman who worked with Sony Music reached out to her with a similar ultimatum concerning her record. Incredibly, Diddy even convinced one of his attorneys to call Cassie at this time. This lawyer told Cassie that it is in your best interest to call Diddy back. Each time Cassie tried to run away, Diddy and his powerful network would be forced back, force her back to him. I read a story on Wattpad that was like literally like this from all the candy that was being ingested from trying to run away. It was one of the best stories I ever read on Wattpad and it had an ending. But back to Cassie and Diddy. So Diddy had a tight hold over her life and damaged her friendships. So around 2018 when Cassie was with her friend Carrie Morgan in her house, Diddy used his key to Cassie's house and he came in unannounced. Sound familiar? That's the same thing minus the key. That's the same thing Darius Jackson did. Came up, showed up to the house unannounced. Diddy and Cassie's friend Miss Morgan had an argument during which Diddy allegedly threw a hanger at Morgan and then upon the information and belief the incident resulted in a settlement between Diddy and Morgan and Cassie ended up paying Morgan additional funds in an attempt to resolve the dispute between her and her close friend and her abusive controlling boyfriend. The relationship between Cassie and Carrie Morgan has been strained ever since. Seeing the extreme measure that Diddy took to keep a tight hold on Cassie and isolate her from the support network and having experienced the repercussions of rejecting his demands, Cassie felt that saying no to Diddy would cost her something. Her family, her friends, her career, and even her life. So now we're going to get into the allegations of R. In 2017-2018, Cassie was very desperate to leave Diddy and just be away from how he was treating her. Now, she recognized that if she stayed with him, she would never be able to have a successful career. She would continue to be mentally and physically abused by him she would be addicted to the candy even more so and she would continue to be a an escort therefore she became determined to break away from diddy completely she began to make efforts to avoid him and then in september 2018 she joined diddy for a dinner at an italian restaurant in malibu for what she thought would be a discussion on how to conclude their relationship for good the thing about relationships like these you can't tell them when you're gonna go you can't tell them where you're going to go you just need to go they don't deserve the respect the decency to even have a final conversation they don't deserve closure that's what she thought the dinner was going to be. But after dinner, Diddy and Cassie, they returned to Cassie's home, which was paid for by Diddy. And then Diddy forced himself into the apartment and tried to kiss Cassie, which was basically kind of like their first interaction. He forced her into the bathroom and tried to kiss her. She told him stop and attempted to push him away. I wouldn't feel comfortable with Diddy following me into my home even if he paid for it. If I was ending things, I don't even want to live in that home anymore. I'm not living in the home that Diddy paid for me if I'm trying to be away from him. I'm going to cut everything off. But it's hard when you're in a vulnerable place, like you're not really thinking soundly like that. But she lets him come into the apartment. He forces himself upon her and takes the clothes off, unbuckles the rep belt. He, she said that she was forced to. And he began to 
R word her and Cassie said no and tried to push him away after Cassie just continually took steps to separate herself from her longtime P essentially and that include leaving the home that he paid for and returning the car that he purchased for her good job that's what that's that's a great job and honestly i feel like this is not the first instance of r word because even these fo's that they would have that was r word cassie didn't want to do that and she was under the influence during those fo's even more so reason why that is also r word so cassie she is trying to disconnect herself with diddy despite moving away cassie's address was posted online in early 2019 and she began to fear for her life Cassie, who was under immense distress during these months after Diddy R-word her, took all the steps possible to entirely remove herself from her abuser's ambit, including entering into her contacts to end her record deal with Bad Boy Entertainment. So as a result of all this trauma that Cassie endured over decades with Diddy allegedly, she has suffered and she continues to suffer immense and emotional distress. She struggled with the physical and mental manifestations of her trauma. Now, with that being said, this was a lot. This was so much. I just hope that it kind of seems like she left one relationship and went on to another. Um, Y'all know her husband, Alex Fine. I just hope that she is in a safe situation with that too. Because a lot of times, sometimes people can go from one relationship where they are being treated like we mentioned before and then they end up going into another one because they haven't healed they haven't spent time alone to just like focus on themselves identifying red flags and so they end up in a similar situation so i hope the best for her now and i hope the best that she's being treated how she should be treated with her husband she has two children and she said she it has allowed her to have a new lease on life and it gave her purpose and she credits her children with saving her from the trauma that consumed her over a decade of her life Except for the months when she was pregnant with her children, Cassie struggled with her addictions to candies and alcohol. Addictions that were established and fueled by Diddy. She turned to substances to drown the memories of her treatment without being intoxicated and she suffered from horrific nightmares of the forced acts that Diddy would demand her um, participate in and regularly schedule these FOs and the physical beating that she endured during the relationship. She had difficulty eating, sleeping, understandably so, and her relationship with her family suffered. And during this time, she frequently had thoughts of deleting herself. So to rebuild her life and her career, she needed to completely reinvent herself. So she checked herself into an inpatient treatment rehabilitation center where she first confronted the extent of the trauma that she lives with. She required extensive therapy and other medical care to recover from through a word and she will forever live with the mental and physical repercussions of over a decade of violence fear and exploitation although she was unable to speak up against the years of abuse that she endured at the hands of diddy allegedly she has since been able to rebuild her life and confront her trauma thanks to the passage of new york's adult survivors act and california's SA Accountability and Cover Up Act. She's now ready and able to confront her A word and hold him and those who enabled his treatment accountable for their actions. So that is so great. This ends happy and she is coming for his neck and I'm here for it.